Welcome to the Lockdown Lunchtime Takeaway. We're going through Luke's Gospel week by week, looking at the claims of Jesus and how they apply to our lives. And this week, there's a very big word that we need to latch on to. It's the word that Jesus used again and again in his preaching, and it's the word kingdom. Listen to these words from chapter 4, verse 43. He says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well. Now, people wanted to know what he meant by this word kingdom. Did it mean, for example, that Jesus was going to come and lead an insurrection and drive out the Roman army and re-establish the kingdom of Israel. Maybe they thought that's what he's talking about. So they crowded in to listen to him preaching. And the beach where he was preaching that day by the lake was so crowded that Jesus found a fishing boat and climbed into it and he sat down in the bow of the fishing boat where he could look out over the crowd and everybody could see him. And Luke doesn't actually tell us what he preached that day, but obviously he's just mentioned that word kingdom in the previous chapter. When Jesus uses the word kingdom, he's not talking about an insurrection. He's not talking about a political kingdom. He's talking about a spiritual kingdom, a kingdom in our hearts. He's talking about changing people on the inside, one by one. And he's talking about the work of his church. Jesus came to be king in people's hearts. And as people turn and follow him, so his kingdom is extended. You see, the problem is that we have all rebelled against God. And because we've rebelled against him, we're guilty. Uh, we're excluded from God. Uh, to reject God is actually the biggest sin of all, the worst sin of all. And to rule him out of our lives. So we need someone to atone for us. And Jesus has come to do that by his death and his resurrection. And then Jesus calls us to change, to repent. And entering his kingdom is about a whole change of direction. He must be the Lord and King of our lives. Now, Luke shows that to us in an encounter between Jesus and Simon Peter. Simon Peter's the man who owns the boat that Jesus has climbed into to preach. And after he's finished preaching, Jesus says to him, just push the boat out into the sea and let's go fishing. Now, Simon Peter knew that if you were a fisherman on that lake, you went fishing at night. Because in the daylight, in the bright sunshine, the fish would go down to the bottom. But at night, they would come up near to the surface. So he says, verse 5, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. Normally, you see, they wouldn't dream of putting out into the sea and fishing in the daylight. But when they do throw their net into the sea, suddenly it's full of fish. In fact, they call over another boat to help them carry this huge load of fish in towards the, the shore. And Simon Peter is scared. Because suddenly he realises that this preacher that he's been listening to, who's been proclaiming this message of his kingdom, suddenly he has power even over, over the fish in the sea. And while they're pulling the net in, Simon Peter turns round to Jesus in the bow of the boat and he falls down in front of him. And this is what he says. He's really scared. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now, Simon Peter was a big, tough bloke. Uh, he, he was very masculine, if you like, very butch. But next to the king of the universe, he just feels brash and dirty and shameful and undone. And actually, across the whole of the Bible, when people experience and encounter the holiness of God, that is their common experience, that when we come into God's presence, we realise we are hopeless by comparison. To come near to a holy God is to be exposed, and so we want to run away and hide. But Jesus has climbed into this boat in order to call Simon to come and be one of his disciples. He wants these rough fishermen to follow him and be part of his kingdom. Although we are weak and we are stupid and we are foolish in so many things that we do in our lives, Jesus is more powerful than that. He can take hold of us. 
He can change the whole direction of our lives. And he has a calling for Simon and his friends. He says to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Jesus is saying to Peter, you can be forgiven. Your unholiness can be cleansed away and I'm going to make you into one of my evangelists, one of my fishermen, if you like, in the, in the spiritual sense. People who are going to go out and find people and bring them into my kingdom. Now, Jesus follows that story with another story in which he encounters a leper. And leprosy is a disease where um, a bacteria gets into the skin and it destroys the nerve endings so you can't feel and you injure yourself. And if it gets into your eyes, it blinds you. It's a terrible disease. Uh, it's always had a, a terrible reputation, hasn't it? People shrunk away from anyone with leprosy in absolute horror. I guess if you were in a supermarket today and somebody suddenly can't starts uh, sneezing and coughing loudly, you're going to run to the end of the aisle as quickly as you can, aren't you? And it was a bit like that. But Jesus approaches this man and it's different. The man falls down at his feet and he asks him, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. And Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I will be clean and immediately the leprosy left him he was clean his skin was clean his leprosy was gone all his nerves were working he was the, the shame and the fear and the worry everything was gone now if jesus can cleanse a leper he can transform you and me if jesus can take somebody like simon very rough edged and blunt and and embarrassed and ashamed and he can make him into a great evangelist to go and proclaim the gospel to the world, then there's room in his kingdom for you and me, and his power, his authority, can change the entire direction of our lives. Next week, we're going to look at another story of a man who was lowered down into a room where Jesus was preaching, because he was paralyzed, this man, and he, he couldn't walk. So he certainly made a grand entrance, and Jesus said something very surprising. We'll look at that next week. If you'd like a copy of Luke's Gospel, just drop us uh, an email to the email address on the screen. And if you live in the Didcot area, we'll be happy to deliver this to your door. If you live in Didcot or the villages all around. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next week.